and members of the Committee of License and Inspections. I am Managing Director Joan Otero Cruz, testifying on behalf of the Managing Director's Office. Accompanying me today are Lionel Robb and Audra Chadwell of Omnicron Technologies, our selected vendor. I am here to testify in support of Bill Number 160151 with the proposed amendments that authorize the City of Philadelphia to issue municipal identification cards to city residents. The Managing Director's Office, MDO, supports the authorization of a municipal identification card, municipal ID program, and is currently working to develop a municipal ID program in Philadelphia for the implementation in fiscal year 2019. The MDO supports Bill Number 160151 with the proposed amendments to allow the MDO to establish regulations regarding required proof of identity and residency, as well as requirements for assurance of IDs for minors 13 and older. The proposed amendments will allow the MDO to utilize consultant expertise and stakeholder input to develop standards to create a municipal ID that hopefully will be accepted by various agencies and organizations, including financial institutions. We understand the need for a municipal ID program in Philadelphia. Government issues IDs are an essential part of modern life. They are often required to open a bank account, cash a check, sign a lease, receive medical treatment such as medically assisted treatment for opioids addiction, interact with law enforcement, or obtain government benefits or other services. We also recognize there are significant barriers to obtaining a government-issued ID, particularly among marginalized populations such as the elderly, returning citizens, individuals living in poverty, undocumented immigrants, LGBTQ individuals, homeless individuals, and survivors of domestic violence or sexual assault. Municipal ID programs offer a more accessible path to obtaining a government-issued ID in our, and the essential services and benefits that accompany it, and would welcome, will be welcomed by the thousands of Philadelphians that face these significant barriers to obtain government-issued identification. As the, at the direction of Mayor Kenny, the Managing Director's Office, in partnership with Temple University, conducted a study to evaluate the various models utilized by municipalities that have implemented a municipal ID program to determine the feasibility of launching a municipal ID program in Philadelphia. We conducted an in-depth research and interviewed a number of jurisdictions to obtain best practices and lessons learned. Based on the research, three, three key themes emerged that would serve as essential central tenets in developing and implementing a City of Philadelphia Municipal ID program. First, for a Municipal ID program to be successful and sustainable, the program must be inclusive and accessible, meaning it is for the benefit and use of all residents, no matter their primary language, cognitive or uh, physical abilities, or social economic status. Second, a municipal ID program must be protective of cardholder holders' privacy and engender trust in the community as a safekeeper of privacy. Municipalities have a responsibility to protect cardholders from unwanted access or disclosure of their personal information, which could have negative personal, legal, and or financial imp impacts particularly on those vulnerable and traditionally mar marginalized populations often served by municipal ID programs. Municipalities cannot just rely on best practice, but must do so, must do significant outreach in the community and form and strengthen relationships with trusted community organizations and leaders. Third, municipal ID programs must offer a wide range of services and benefits to attract as many cardholders as possible. This ensures the program is financially sustainable, reduces the potential for creating stigma by ensuring wide adoption, and provides a more useful and enjoyable cardholder experience. We believe that this legislation addresses these central tenets and that the MDO incorporated these core concepts 
and this ordinance in the development of a request for proposals, RFP, for vendor support in design, development, and administration of the City of Philadelphia Municipal ID. We are also pleased to announce that we have completed our review of the proposals received and selected our vendor, Omnicron. Omnicron is a technology firm with over 20 years experience that provides consulting development, card printing and fulfillment, information management, and security solutions. Omnicron recently launched the City of Chicago's Municipal ID program. We believe Omnicron's expertise, experience, and secure and adaptable platform will provide the support needed to successfully implement our Municipal ID program. The RFP and vendor proposal promotes inclusiveness and access. The vendor will provide services in all languages, as is the citywide requirement for services. This requirement extends to the application itself, both in paper or web form, and all customer-facing materials. Additionally, appointments will be made to be, uh, to be made online or by phone. A central enrollment site will be um, complemented by the capability and use of mobile sites that can be deployed directly in Philadelphia communities. The RFP and vendor proposal also ensure a resident's right to privacy is protected. No original documents would be saved under the proposed process to minimize the chance of unwanted disclosure of cardholder personal information. However, the vendor will help ensure a process to address duplicates and lost cards. The MDO has been working with the Office of Innovation Technology, known as OIT, to ensure the selected vendor and system will be secure. The MDO has begun and will continue significant outreach community organizations and advocates to build a relationship of trust and raise awareness of the program. The RFP and vendor proposal also seek to provide a mechanism on the municipal ID to offer a wide range of services. The RFP requires the, M the municipal ID system to be easily integrated, new partners, benefits and services, and the ability for the municipal ID card to be accepted as a primary form of ID at financial institutions. Additionally, we will also be bringing on a full-time municipal ID program manager to manage the vendor and lead planning and implementation. The program manager will also lead efforts to develop service and benefit partnerships, such as with banks and credit unions, government agencies, cultural institutions, and community partnerships that can facilitate education and outreach. The MDO office has identified and begun to work with various inter internal operational departments, including public property, the free library, and the prisons. The program project plan is divided into four specific phases. Design, number one, design planning and development, August through January. Number two, implementation, pilot, and training and engagement, that's January through March. Number three, transition, administration, management, April through June and four and final ongoing support and program growth July onward. A noted priority of the RFP and key driver of the need for MDO's proposed amendment is to ensure our municipal ID can be accepted at some financial institutions. Under Title III of the U.S. Patriot Act, entitled the International Money Laundry Abatement and Anti-Terrorist Finance Act of 2001, financial institutions are required to have a customer identification program known as CIP. CIPs have the general requirement that enable banks to form a reasonable belief it knows the true identity of its customer. Each bank has its own unique CIP program, so there is no one-size-fits-all solution to have a municipal ID accepted by an institution. MDO would like to work directly with local financial institutions and utilize the expertise of our selected vendor to establish standards for required proof of identity and residency by regulation to ensure our municipal ID is accepted at as many financial institutions as possible. 
Similarly, we want to ensure the unique process for assurance of municipal ID cards for minors can simply be accepted at financial institutions. MDO's goal is to hire program staff that will consist of one program manager, one program coordinator who has been hired and starts September 24th, and three outreach workers to develop and implement program. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. We look forward to working with members of council and implement the municipal ID program. Also present today is Barbara Thompson from Thompson Consulting, who is Omnicom's marketing subcontractor. We're happy to answer any questions the committee may have at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna quickly just put some framing questions. I just for the, for the purposes of my colleagues, the amendment that has been circulated um, outside of the technical amendments uh, that, that are traditionally provided has three components of it. One, at the request of the administration to allow um, identification and residency requirement documentation to be done by regulation. We are going to trust that the administration will ensure that these documents are documents that are easily attainable. I don't know if folks have seen um, a recent article that just even talked about the acquisition of birth certificates and the complication it, it, it creates, um, particularly for the poor in the state of Pennsylvania. So um, we've agreed to regulatory uh, documents uh, by regulation. Um, we are asking the administration to submit um, reports to the clerk's office for purposes of transparency and public accountability accountability um, and we're asking for the establishment of a working group um, so that our stakeholders who've worked with us through this process will have some say in the implementation process to again ensure accountability and transparency so those are the three components of the um, amendments as circulated uh, to the committee. I want to, Chair wants to recognize that the Vice Chair, Councilman Dom, has also joined us. Very quickly, what is the budget allocation for this year and what is the projected budget allocation for next year? So the original budget um, for the municipal ID that the administration has proposed was five, $578,000. Mm -hmm. um, but that dollar figure assumed um, that we would have a year's worth of expenditures. Um, and staffing. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the lower, so basically um, we anticipate right now about $370,000. Okay. Um, has the administration begun to identify the efficiencies that might be gained as you work with other different departments? Is that one of the things you're looking at? And is there anything that you can report back in the initial conversations for potential yeah. efficiencies? So, as stated in the um, testimony, we have begun to have conversations with various partners, in particular public property, where our vendor can speak to um, the systems in place and the terminology regarding technology. But we think that both public property, um, working with our HR, um, it's very comparable and we're able to um, uh, integrate the system and uh, ensuring that the municipal ID um, will become the city um, employee, employer ID, as well as the Philadelphia Free Library. The systems are very comparable um, and we're able to have some form of integration. All the specifications are still underway in, in, in conversation, but um, our vendor has done this in Chicago, so um, Lionel, if you can expand yes. upon that. State your name for the record. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Lionel Rabb uh, for, with Omicron Technologies. I'm the CEO. Um, yes, uh, well, thank you first uh, to, the, to the committee, uh, and we're happy to be here and happy to be working with MDO and the uh, City of Philadelphia and the various stakeholders and departments uh, on the municipal ID program. Uh, as mentioned, we did deploy uh, the City of Chicago's municipal ID. And there was a uh, conversation and discussion around efficiencies uh, and opportunities. Um, here uh, in meeting with your public property, uh, your uh, staff in various departments carry uh, multiple identity cards. Um, some are just for identity, some are for door access. Uh, the identity portion, non the door, the non-door access because you own multiple facilities is definitely an opportunity to drive some efficiency. Um, around that, uh, that would also help public property on some, uh, I think, some staffing fronts and people getting pulled and all these other opportunities there. 
Um, and then on uh, the public library process, um, by applying the free library uh, barcode or uh, uh, their um, member ID to the municipal ID gives an opportunity for residents and people to not have to go get an, uh, the additional card from the public library. Um, those are the two initial ones that we've, we've come across. Well, for us, that was an important part of, of, of this process, the partnerships. I mean, the, as you know, those, that's what leads to the effectiveness of this program. Um, can you speak to, um, um, from the managing director's office, you know, we were very intentional in trying to include young people, particularly because we have such a, a wonderful summer employment program. What are the, what if any conversations have happened with the school district about young people 13 and older who need this for working mm -hmm. papers and yeah. to cash their checks? So um, the school, with the school district, um, we are still pending conversations um, with, we have had um, conversations with the Philadelphia Parks and Rec Department. Uh, they have a youth program through PYN, and um, they are definitely um, embracing this. You know, 13 allows them to really, um, you know, that, that's a good time for, for young people to really start thinking about identification cards. They're also thinking about, I want to start my working papers next year, so that we thought that that would be a good merge. And they, would, they are definitely in favor and in support. I think logistically we still need to figure out lots of things, but um, they're definitely in favor. To, to our vendor, um, in your initial conversations with some of our departments, do you foresee some tech, technology problems with interfacing our data, our data systems for um, the purposes of implementation? So in working with uh, your OIT, uh, your Office of Innovation Technology, and some of the departments, I mean, there's always uh, unknown questions. We've had some initial discussions. Um, your processes are pretty clean around how things function and work. So from a process perspective and from a business perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but from a data data perspective, there's always a question we haven't got into that uh, that deep yet, but we feel that the city of Philadelphia has really strong process and that's a huge step in um, creating processes is, is a whole other or fixing a process. So from uh, getting people in enrolled and assigned, especially from an HR perspective, seems very good. And there's an opportunity to um, uh, replace some existing stuff uh, at a lower cost. Okay. I think it's hugely important if we're gonna get community buy-in before we even market externally, showing at, that internally we've bought in is hugely yes. important. Yes, so. absolutely. I think okay. I also wanna add that, you know, in conversations with, uh, and you can probably expand upon this, Lionel, but, um, <laughs> And we want to ensure that we're not collecting data, um, and so we're, you know, as, as minimal as possible. We, we still have to address, you know, how do we um, do duplicates, for example, if someone loses their card. Um, so we still have to define what that looks like. However, with the Philadelphia Library, I think one of the things that we discussed is they, they have, you know, um, their own individual system, um, and obviously that they have different standards to go by. Um, so I believe that this is the way it's worked in Chicago and in New York and in different places. While they would, we would have a batch of their barcodes, for example, that we would be able to utilize and integrate into the municipal ID, it's actually not, in, it's actually the library card is not activated until that individual, you know, goes to the free library to mm -hmm. utilize it, at which time they would be buying into their their service product, right? And so they are they store different data and um, whatever their systems is would take into effect. So I think that that would be extremely important as part of the promotional and marketing materials and all of that roll out, um, which is why we need to engage different um, community partners on the educational piece. Um, because we want to make sure that they understand it's two separate systems in our data, we, wouldn't, we won't have that. For mm -hmm. example, we won't have their addresses or anything. It's two separate systems once they activate it. Yeah, and to that point, just to follow up, that what the a practice from Chicago that uh, makes a lot of sense is that once the city uh, generates a card for a stakeholder or for a resident, um, what they opt into after that is not the city's responsibility, mm -hmm. right? So they, so you follow, uh, the individual follows the free library's process, and that creates a different record that has nothing that does not come back to the city in any way, shape, or form. Right. Um, I know so. there's an issue of access versus liability, right? Yeah. And, and yes. uh, so you need arm's length of that. Yeah. So I don't want to manipulate the conversation, but I want to allow my uh, councilman Jones has 
has a question, and then I can. Well, Madam Chair, first of all, thank you for staying on top of this issue. It goes back and it has evolved a, a great deal. Uh, and thank you, Councilwoman Gim, for being a part of this as well. A uh, couple of, so just on a practical note, I have a young person who's starting out in his life and can't uh, find a way to get ID. So this helps to address that issue for them to establish themselves as a citizen, as a resident, and uh, avoid uh, sometimes being uh, stopped at night uh, by uh, law enforcement, well-meaning law enforcement, and say, who are you? And they cannot prove who they are. That's a issue. The second one goes the whole other end of the spectrum, where a gentleman uh, wanting to participate uh, in, in the elections, uh, although voter ID, this is very different from that, could not prove he was born because the town that he came from the south end didn't keep records modernized. So when the courthouse got a flood or caught fire, he could not prove who he was and affected his social security status, couldn't apply for it. So this thing um, has wide ranging ramifications. Um, so thank you for uh, taking it on. Two quick questions. One, what possibly could it look like? Like, Great is question. it more like city IDs or is it more like a driver's license? It's going to have the Eagles logo. That's, yeah. that, that's <laughs> mandatory. That's a mandatory. Most popular kind. Well, <laughs> That'll be everybody outside of Philly. <laughs> um, I think um, we, we definitely, uh, Lionel can speak to the authenticity of the card because it definitely will have um, features for security. Um, in terms of the actual look and feel, I would say it looks more like a license than anything yeah. else. Um, but I did want to say that this is, we, our, our, our hope is really to be um, able to accommodate as many people as possible. But, um, you know, I definitely um, don't think that this, we, we still have things to, to figure out. We do know that there are stateless individuals. Um, as you indicated in your scenario, that um, pose a challenge as to, you know, what is the verification process, the you know, um, for identity. Um, so I think that that is still going to be an ongoing challenge that we we're we're trying to figure that stuff out now. And in, in light of uh, national security, you cited some of the regs involved in that. We want to be lockstep in that regard, so that th so so when they told us about a year ago that uh, licenses weren't going to allow people on planes anymore and, until they were. So this is cutting edge, so I would hope that we, we would be forward thinking to be able to say that, you know, in a case of a kid trying to go out to the West Coast to visit a relative, that this would be at least one piece of ID that might uh, meet all of the benchmarks for the federal government's uh, security. How, 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 how realistic is that? So maybe you could talk a little bit yeah. about the features and the requirements to sure. ensure that it's ones. an authentic document. Yep. So, um, so I'll step back for a minute and discuss the look and feel first. Uh, so the look, um, the goal, the goal of, of an ID card, uh, especially for municipal use, is to one, make it look uh, professional, secure, and high quality. Uh, so it is closer to a driver's license than some of the other cards you may see. Um, when you get into security, so the next big question is how do you know that it's real? And there's a, um, there's a requirement that we've made to the city and the city has accepted, uh, or, or recommendation I should say, of various covert and overt uh, and forensic security features built into the card so that it can be authenticated both by visual or by inspection. Um, with that, along with other requirements, are various steps in the process to meet different standards. One being the Patriot Act for banks, where you need to ver you, you as you stated in the testimony, uh, there's a reasonable knowledge of that this this is this person's identity. Um, that process can be handled without that process can be handled without data storage around the individual who's applying. Um, some of the further federal requirements. Uh, are, are much more stringent and much deeper. And so there is a difference between 
municipal ID, voter ID, and real ID. And real ID is what you're, you're talking about. And um, that's, a, that's a bit of a, a larger leap for sure. a municipal ID program to take. And we, we talk about that in our RFP response of the differences and where there is opportunity for municipal ID that the city can embrace a platform that can eventually reach that point, but it will not start at that point. So reciprocity issues. Um, for example, <coughs> would a youth that worked in the summer program as uh, Councilwoman Sanchez talked about, got his first piece of ID, cashed his first check with it, proud, would that be a reciprocity with the school district, for example? Would they, you know, have, have we begun those kinds of so discussion. those conversations are pending with the school district, um, definitely with, as I mentioned, with Parks and Rec um, and recognizing it as a, an ID. Um, um, that is something that they're embracing. I, and in terms of whether or not that individual is going to be able to open up a bank account or, you know, go cash his or her check, um, those are, um, you know, those are conversations we need to have with different vendors. So our, our, our hope is that we get as many um, you know, different providers to really recognize this as a, a municipal and, and valid um, with lots of integrity that the, the, the security features has on the card and recognize it and accept it as widely as possible. So finally, one of the ones that I really need you to negotiate with is SEPTA. Uh, our seniors, um, we take photos for them, we set them up in our offices now where we take that that reciprocity, um, I think, is probably, pound for pound, one of the most important. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I, you know, for financial institutions as well as SEPTA, I, I would think that anyone who we financially support mm. um, would play nice in the sandbox, right? You because, would think. Because if not, we can always put it in their contracts, right? right. They have there to come go. before us every year. So let's hope they willingly cooperate and that we don't have to institutionalize it in our agreements with them. I want to recognize Councilwoman Gim, who's been extremely helpful in this process, and then I'll, uh, Councilman Dom. Councilwoman Gim. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you so much for your leadership on this. It's great to be in partnership with um, with Councilman Jones as well and other members of the committee to see something go forward. I think municipal ID is one of the most powerful things we can do as a municipality to help many of our um, you know vulnerable citizens get access to the public institutions and spaces that they desperately need. So I really want to thank you. And uh, you know it's been two years since we visited New York City to see a pretty expansive program. So thank you for all the hard work that you and your staff put in um, to get us this far. So thank you very much. It's wonderful to have you both here. Um, my question is, how are you uh, measuring success of the program? So beyond even just you know the numbers of people who enroll, of course, um, I care about how many people enroll. It also matters, you know, uh, making sure that youth and immigrants and um, seniors and returning citizens all have an opportunity. Are you establishing? some metrics of success about how you're going to see this uh, We're, we're still out. definitely developing that um, in terms of what our metrics would be, uh, which we've you know, obviously committed to doing semi-annual reports to, to the council. Um, so we're still in that phase. I mean, obviously, you know, I like to say we're, we're counting widgets. We would love to do more than that, right? How does that impact um, you know, the, the resident um, who have them? Um, you know, are, how many people are accessing their benefits um, if the provider is able to work with us? Um, in addition, um, other things that they have done is, you know, satisfactory surveys. So those are some things that we, we are exploring and whether or not we can implement here in terms of um, e evaluating the success of the program. And Lionel, I know you have some recommendations yeah. too from Chicago mm -hmm. um, and some of the work with even San Francisco. Yeah, the, um, so the challenge of not uh, storing data about people that are getting the card creates a challenge of how do you measure the success. So we, we don't have age. We don't know if they're senior. So we don't know where they may live, right? We, we, we don't store address. So asking what area or what age is getting the most, or, and we definitely don't store their status of uh, legal citizenship or not. Um, but on the other side of that, there is opt-in where it's de-identified data when the, at the point of creation you could ask, is it okay for us to put your zip code over here? It's not related to the creation of your ID at all so that the council and the city can say we know from this area. 
Um, there's surveys after or pre or post uh, of the process, especially around marketing materials. Again, all data that is collected is de-identified. Um, there is sheer on just numbers. That's, that's, uh, that's the initial benchmark. And then when you're working with partners like the Free Library or, um, or even with prisons, um, they, again, have their own systems that have the opt-in opportunity to say, we'll have a bank of numbers, we'll also have a bank of assigned cards that we say, how many of these cards did go out or how many of these accounts were activated. With certain, with certain incentives that you may bring into fruition, again, I can't say enough that a focused uh, action by a dedicated staff around the program is key to build partnerships and build trust. Um, and with that can be the notion that people keep track of uh, from the from the partner side what what they're giving out as the incentive um, So the ones that are more advanced may be able like in Chicago. There's a partnership with Lyft Lyft gave out a series of coupon codes. There's no identified information back to the municipal ID or the recipient or anything about them But the city can ask how many of the coupon codes got used right so it gives some notion of usage um, There's lots of different ways to approach it uh, and we're here to work with the city to identify the best. And, and just really quickly, so in Chicago, do you, so do you track usage? Like, so if ours were associated, for example, with our free libraries or access into schools, is there any way to track how frequently people use those as a measure of success? Um, like, yeah. I mean, I assume they're not really swipeable because we're not trying to like track people like a big brother system, but you know, is there a way for us to sh demonstrate in some way, some measure of, of the municipal ID not only just being passed out, but actually being used in a significant way. So it goes back to the city requesting the information from, C from your library, right? Mm -hmm. So in Chicago, they could say, uh, you've given us these 20,000 uh, ID numbers. How many of these ID numbers have been activated? So it's not, the city will not be uh, able to generate a report live from your library because that becomes a bridge of information sharing, right? So um, what you can do is this office can send a request to the library to say, these are our assigned numbers, how many have been activated? We don't want any f other information, right? Just send us back, 3,000 have been activated. So that's the way Chicago has approached it. Same with uh, commercial partners like Lyft. Okay, all right, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman again, Councilman John. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon. I have to just call some questions about Chicago's doing this right now? Correct. And how long have they been doing it for? Uh, they deployed, um, December was uh, the kickoff. Uh, they went into a pilot for a few months and went in full bake since uh, April 1. And how have they worked with the banks there to get the banks to accept the municipal IDs? It's still a work in progress. Uh, they're starting as, as the, I believe the, the chair had said, with their strategic partners to uh, discuss further. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, an, it's a work in progress. And have you experienced any fraud or misuse in Chicago yet? So um, you're always surprised what people will do. Uh, before the program started in December, yes, there was two small cases. Uh, one was a uh, someone took a picture out of a out of the uh, off the internet. They printed it, the picture, uh, put their picture in place of our city clerk with the city hall address and laminated it, and then attempted to cash a check at a currency exchange in I believe Iowa or Missouri. Uh, they called city hall and asked if this was real, and it was not because the program hadn't started. Um, the second was a, a, similar, a similar situation, but we have not seen um, any sort of widespread uh, attempts or usage that we know of. Are most people getting municipal IDs, do they file tax returns? Um, do they file tax returns? Yes. Um, I can't speak to uh, whether they do. I, I'm, I'm not sure of that. Only reason why I say that is because, you know, we have the EITC program at least we should make available to those getting municipal IDs of the federal money that they could possibly get through EITC. Yes. Yeah, and, and we haven't, um, we have a, a, an extensive amount of those programs also, um, and I, I think it's a great recommendation. I have not heard that uh, mentioned in Chicago yet. I, I will absolutely bring that back. But if we could incorporate the EITC reimbursements with the program, it would yep. help those getting municipal IDs. That would be, that would be brilliant. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, we absolutely, and that's come up in the conversations with stakeholders, is how do we um, 
how do we uh, you know get benefits discounts all those other things so that there's an added value to mm -hmm. to the marketing of, of this so um, one last question in terms of you get you issue you gave a timeline um, uh, in your testimony um, originally there were press reports that you were looking to launch in January your timeline is a little bit different realistically um, what, what do you think would be the launch date? Our aim continues to be in January. Okay. And that would be with kind of the internal departments first? Internal departments, and we have um, some stakeholders in particular who are addressing a lot of the opioids um, um, issues um, that we definitely have had initial conversations with as being one of our remote um, uh, mobile sites. Mm -hmm. So the one thing, and we've talked about it, and you alluded to it in your, your testimony, the prisons, I feel very, very strongly, I mean, mm -hmm. with our returning citizens, no one should be le leaving our prisons without that. I mean, that, that is, becomes an impediment for them accessing mm -hmm. anything, right? Um, so is that going to be one of the priority departments? Yes, we've, we've had a, a, a walkthrough with prisons. Um, Commissioner Carney is extremely supportive. Um, it's just really logistics in terms of where it fits. Um, and we, in terms of the um, identity piece, there is definitely lots of documentation that mm -hmm. they obtain um, that would definitely fit in the scope of the regulations that we're talking about. We need to... Um, Except the photo. Let's not use those photos, right? <laughs> no, we would issue out new photos because <laughs> there would be a remote spot. But yes, there's interest in that. We just don't have a timeline as to when that department will roll out. Okay. Uh, Council Mosquilla? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, these are going to be issued within the city limits, correct? Yes. So there has to be a certified address to? They need to prove residency. That's correct. So that's still going to be a challenge for some folks, right? We're, uh... We are trying to be um, as exhaustive as possible with the regulations as we're formulating them, which is why it's so important to talk to different stakeholders to see what they're seeing at their end. Uh, we want whatever documents are incorporated in the regulations that are attainable to individuals who are either homeless or, or addressing any of their, their needs. Um, so we're, it's still work in progress, but there would be a piece of residency um, that would be required. Including, it could be a social service, um, right. you know, like a, a homeless shelter or a respite um, that would work with us as a partner to be or able to verify um, as we do with our homelessness services. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions from our panel? Anyone else here to testify on this bill? Seeing none, the Committee on Licenses and Inspections will now move to our public meeting. Um, the chair will recognize the vice chair, Councilman Dom, for a motion on the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I offer an amendment to Bill Number 160151. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee, and I move the amendment to Bill Number 160151 be approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Seeing none, the amendment to Bill 160151 is adopted. Um, the chair recognizes Councilman Dom for a motion on the amended bill. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move that Bill Number 160151, as amended, be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation, and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. All those in favor? Any Aye. opposition? Seeing none. Um, bill 160151, as amended, will be moved out of this committee with a favorable um, recommendation and rule suspension for our next council. A session. This concludes the hearing. Once again, I want to thank all of the stakeholders, the managing director's office, and the mayor's administration for their work, and we look forward to the establishment of the working group and the launch of the Philadelphia-based Muni ID program. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.